my channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you are new, welcome. My name is Shantanique and this is my YouTube channel. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I upload videos three times a week on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 4 p.m. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Also make sure you follow me over on Instagram. We're slowly growing on Instagram, but I'm trying my best to be more active. So be sure to follow me there. So this is probably a video that you guys have waited so long for. In my last HR video, I mentioned that I was going to start an HR series, um, which essentially we're going to focus on the different components of human resources. I'll specifically focus on one um, component per video and I'll give you all kinds of background information and information related to that specific department within HR to kind of set you up for success and give you a, an overall understanding of what it is. I know there's a lot of confusion around you know how do you become a, a recruiter? How do you get started in HR? What do you do in payroll? So I feel like this series is going to be very helpful to those who are one, trying to get their foot in the door, two, who are already within HR, but still in that um, entry level type phase. And then three, for informational purposes, um, for current recruiters, for people who are maybe interested but not totally sure about that career choice. So hopefully this series is very helpful. Of course, y'all, I have to go ahead and mention it in this video. I am super overwhelmed with DMs on Instagram. So if I don't respond to your DM immediately, please forgive me. I just don't have the capacity to respond to hundreds of DMs per day. Um, and I'm sorry, I try to get to as many as I can, but it's not one straight answer that I can just copy and paste because obviously everyone's journey and everyone's situation is totally different. So bear with me there. Um, two, the second housekeeping item, please do not send me emails related to human resources. I try to help y'all out as much as I can. The best way for me to answer you is just to leave a comment on the video. I promise I'll go through the comments and answer as best I can. But when I have my um, collabs and other business type stuff come into my email and then I'm flooded with questions for my email, I'm related to HR, it's just not convenient or organized and y'all know how I am about organization. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this video. If you are interested in learning about talent acquisition, keep watching. All right, so let's talk about talent acquisition. Y'all, talent acquisition is honestly a fancy name for recruiting. So when you see a different title or if you see acquisition, don't let it scare you off. Essentially, it's the same thing. Talent acquisition or talent specialists or recruiters, and we'll get into all of those types of titles, um, essentially is a role that is solely responsible for bringing talent to an organization. They're responsible for hiring, they're responsible for the end-to-end -end process, so beginning to end, start to finish process of bringing new candidates in the door. It can be different at different companies, obviously, but I've worked in recruiting roles where I literally hired someone up until onboarding. I met them on the first day. I filled out their onboarding information and walked them to their hiring manager. I've also sat in recruiting roles where essentially we're filling the seat. We send them their offer letter, never onboard, never do anything. That's kind of the end of that process. So understand that it can be different. Um, end to end has different meanings for different organizations, obviously. Of course, that is going to be based on the size. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Talent acquisition titles. What kind of titles should you look for if you're interested in recruiting? It's a lot of them. Honestly, your best bet is going to be to go to Indeed and just type in recruiter. If you type in recruiter under your search, it's going to pull all of those different titles. Um, companies title jobs differently based on their structure, but honestly, y'all, it's the same thing. Recruiting, talent acquisition partner, corporate recruiter, staff recruiter, talent acquisition consultant, staffing consultant. 
Those are some examples of recruiters. Essentially, they do the same thing. It may be at different levels. It may be for different kinds of organizations um, and different size organizations, but honestly, they do the same thing. So don't let that deter you um, or scare you off if you say, oh God, what is a talent acquisition partner? I was just looking for um, a recruiting role. Take a stab at it, read the job description, read the post, I guarantee you they're totally aligned. So those are talent acquisition titles. Let's talk about the assistance to talent acquisition partners. So a recruiter's assistant might be titled um, a talent coordinator. So a talent acquisition partner may be responsible for finding the talent, bringing the talent to the organization from end to end. Whereas a talent coordinator may be responsible for the paper pushing that's on the other end. Are you sending them information to get their background check done? Are you reaching out to check their references? Are you reaching out to confirm their education or you know whatever certification that they may have? Who's getting their drug screens scheduled? Um, who's actually scheduling their first day of work? Who's scheduling the interview with the hiring manager? Those are generally things that the talent coordinator does. They essentially coordinate all of the moving pieces for that particular new hire. So a talent acquisition partner or a recruiter and a talent coordinator work hand in hand. Um, a talent acquisition partner is above a talent coordinator, so it's as if one is the assistant, but they work hand in hand um, and they generally partner together. So if you're looking for something that's super entry level, you're not very confident as far as being a recruiter and kind of driving the boat, Try looking for some talent coordinator type positions. Apply to those positions, stay in it for six months a year, get your feet wet, make sure you understand the process, what it looks like from end to end, and then maybe moving up to a talent acquisition partner or a recruiter might be the next step for you. So let's talk requirements. What is required for you to actually become a recruiter? What qualifications do you have to have for companies to honestly give you an opportunity or at least review your resume? Honestly, y'all, all you need is a high school diploma. Now, listen to me carefully. That is the very basic minimum requirement, okay? High school diploma. However, most companies, especially reputable companies and larger companies, strongly prefer that you have an undergraduate degree. It doesn't matter what kind of degree it is, but some, most, most, not some, most reputable companies are going to want you to hold some type of bachelor's. Now, does it matter if it's a BA or a BS? Absolutely not. Does it matter whether it's in HR or history? Absolutely not. Um, but them being able to see that you hold that higher level degree will give you a better shot or a better chance at getting a call back to interview than not. Uh, and that's just as simple as that. You don't have to have a fancy degree. There is no such thing as a degree in recruiting anyway. If you are getting a degree in HR management or anything along those lines, you might have a couple of classes on recruiting, but recruiting isn't a specified degree type. Like it's, it's just not. Um, so high school diploma, bare basic minimum, bare basic minimum, college degree will most certainly, should most certainly get you a call back. Now, the times have changed. We're in 2020, so the older lady who is a recruiter at your company may only have a high school diploma, but she may have 15 or 20 years of experience. Sometimes for organizations, that experience is equivalent to holding a degree. Whereas you may have a bachelor's degree and you may not have any experience at all. And you're sitting here wondering like, oh my God, I have a bachelor's and she has a high school diploma. Why is it that we're in the same seat? Or why is it that she has a recruiting job and I don't? It's like comparing apples to oranges. Um, back then, a lot of people didn't go to college to obtain degrees and quite honestly HR was an administrative type role 
um, but obviously now college is very popular and when I say now I'm talking last 30 40 50 years um, college is more popular it's kind of like the thing to do for most American families don't come from my head talking about no entrepreneurship and college is a scam for most middle-class Americans they strive for their children to go to college whether it's a scheme or not I'll leave that up for you to decide but the reality is you didn't have to have a degree in 1960 to do this now if you don't have a degree you might not get your shot you, you just might not get an opportunity um, to sit in the seat and that's just being honest so let's talk about experience and this is like the the perfect segue what do you do if you don't have any experience in recruiting but you want to kind of get your foot in the door and you want to get started hopefully you guys have watched all of my other hr videos if you have you'll know that recruiting was how i got my foot in the door recruiting is probably one of the easiest it's one of the easiest departments to get started in it's it's one of the easiest specialties to kind of get started in because you can use your transferable skills from other positions to bump your resume or boost your resume or cushion your resume in a way that will help you obtain a recruiting job. For example, let's say you work at McDonald's and you're a team lead at McDonald's and you worked at McDonald's all throughout high school and then when you went to college you became a team lead and now you're like a supervisor. As a part of your supervisor job duties, you should have some type of skill set in where you're talking to prospective candidates, whether that is you're pulling applications, you're actually calling them to get something scheduled, you're actually, you know, doing their phone interview, you're doing their first interview, you're working with your manager to complete their first interview, whatever the case is, you should have some type of transferable skill that you can use from that opportunity that you took at McDonald's and you've been working there for five years. You can use that to boost your resume and essentially help you after you've graduated from college. So that's kind of how you have to think. You have to be a logical thinker and say, hmm, what have I done in my other jobs that is technically kind of along the lines of recruiting or HR or something. How can I butter that up and make it sound really, really good on my resume? That's the name of the game because your resume is just your selling tool and that's what you're doing. You're selling yourself. Um, another example of that would be, let's say you never had any type of lead role, but you work at Hmm. You work at Target, and while working at Target, you're a cashier, but every time there's a new hire that comes in the door, your leadership team reaches out to you to say, hey, can you train so-and-so? You know, can you show them how to use the register? Um, can they shadow you? That's a great opportunity for you to use those skills that you gained at Target to make them transferable to boost your resume if you're interested in heading down the road to recruiting. The second most important part of trying to get your foot in the door without having any experience is to network. You have to network, you have to be able to speak to people, you have to be able to talk to all types of different people, you have to be confident, you have to really sell yourself. Let's be honest, recruiting is really a sales job because what you're doing is you're talking to a prospective candidates and although they want the job or they're interested in the job it's also your duty to kind of give them a, a sneak peek or a glimpse at your company and why your company is the best and why they should work for your company and why they would like to join the team okay you don't ever get on a an interview and say hey you know why do you want to work here blah 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 without actually giving that candidate some type of background okay um thank you so much for applying to the cashier position at best buy um we are very i don't know i'm team driven here 
Um, we love to have our sales competitions every month. Whoever sells the most this gets a free Chick-fil-A biscuit. Um, the work-life balance is great. You're eligible for overtime. Um, Best Buy offers short-term disability for their part-time employees. Our pay is really competitive. It's a sales pitch, whether you like it or not. That's what recruiting is. It's a, it's a sales job. It's just that the people on the other end are likely very interested in the position that you're selling. So you wanna make sure that you're networking, you wanna make sure you get your name out there, get your face out there. If there are any HR organizations that you can join, HR groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever, get out there, network, and let people know you're interested in getting into recruiting. Do they know anybody? Do they have any opportunities? Do they have any advice? All of that. The third thing is to boost your LinkedIn. LinkedIn is going to be your best friend when working in human resources, especially, especially when working in recruiting, okay? So your LinkedIn profile needs to be in tip top shape. You need to make sure you have a professional picture. You need to make sure your job summaries and descriptions are accurate. You need to make sure your job history is accurate. Go on there and find people you went to school with. Find people that you worked with. Endorse them in hopes that they'll endorse you. Ask people to endorse you. They can leave you a comment about maybe they worked with you on a group project in college and you were super organized. Um, or maybe both of you guys were in beta club in high school. Or maybe you were the president of student council. Anything along those lines is going to be very helpful for your LinkedIn profile. You should take your LinkedIn profile as serious as you take Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, whatever social media platform is your thing, your LinkedIn profile should be tip top shape. Pretend that LinkedIn is your cover letter and your resume is your resume. So boost your LinkedIn, get active on LinkedIn if you're not, stay in tune, stay in touch, use LinkedIn, network. I promise you it will work in your favor. Number five, now this is something that you will have to do if in fact you do land a job in recruiting, but before we even get there, I wanna let you know that you have to be resourceful. You have to be very creative. You have to be willing to think outside of the box. Right now, we're in a time where people are actually looking for jobs, but that's not always the case, especially when our unemployment rate was extremely low. Sometimes you're going to have to be able to go out there and actually look for talent. Right. Next thing we're going to talk about is misconceptions. So let's talk about a couple of misconceptions in recruiting. The first being recruiters are people who actually hire candidates. So keep in mind, when we started this video, I told you the sole purpose of a recruiter is to bring talent to an organization. Recruiters don't make the hiring decisions, okay? That's why you have a hiring manager, right? So essentially, a recruiter is working very closely with the hiring manager to find the correct talent for that hiring manager. So at most companies, this is kind of what the process looks like. As a recruiter, you reach out to three prospective candidates that you think would be a really good fit by looking at their resume, you give them a call, you do an initial interview, you kind of get a feel for them. Yeah, I like them. No, I really don't like them. Oh, they lied on their resume. Oh no, their resume is really in tip top shape. Based on whichever candidates you interview and you like, you pass them on to the hiring manager. So as a recruiter, you can't successfully hire someone for a team that you're not even a part of. Now, two types. Sometimes you have direct hire recruiters, which in fact will say, hey, I need a software engineer, find a software engineer, a company pays you as a sole contractor or a part of a staffing agency, and that they're getting that one engineer, period. But if you work for a company, you're going to have to get that group of candidates that you've interviewed and you've liked, hand them off to the HM, which is a hiring manager, the hiring manager is going to talk to them and interview them. A good hiring manager is going to follow up with you to say, hey, what did you think about candidate A? Or hey, I didn't really like candidate B, what did you think? You guys are going to essentially agree on a candidate 
after you after you've agreed so the hiring manager likes the candidate you think the candidate is qualified and you like them too then you reach out to say hey we want to offer you the position as a recruiter you just don't get to go find talent and just put them in positions because you want to you're not that decision maker the hiring manager ultimately makes those decisions you're just giving them those resources or those candidates to choose from that's a very big misconception people don't understand that they don't connect the dots that there is someone in between a recruiter and the actual position you have to go through an additional step and for some jobs you have to go through five additional steps I told y'all I did like five interviews before I got my job. I interviewed with the recruiter and then I interviewed with the manager and then a director and then um, a VP. It was just like all over the place. Sometimes it kind of works like that. Typically you might have two rounds of interviews. You're lucky if you only have one. But for higher level jobs you can easily have three to five rounds of interviews. That's very common. Another misconception or something that I want to talk about is talent ratio. So as a recruiter, you have to be mindful of who you're reaching out to to continue the hiring process without being or without doing it maliciously or in a discriminatory way. OK, you don't want to look at someone and say, hey, I need to find one man to interview um and five ladies to interview that's not what you want to do the chips just kind of fall as they may if one male and four or five women are the best candidates then that's who you go with you don't knock one of those women out just because they're a woman or you don't disqualify someone just because they're black or because their name looks black or because their school looks white or because they're not from the united states that's not a part of recruiting at all. You're just looking at their skill set and if they meet the requirements and their skill set makes sense, if they would be a good candidate for the job. Don't try to say, okay, so um, we got 20 candidates, 15 of them are women and five of them are men. So I'm gonna pick 10 women and I'm only gonna pick one man. No. You better look through all 20 of those and you better pick your top five or your top 10. Whatever the top number that you're choosing, you need to look at the group as a whole. Don't look at it by race, age, gender. No, that, that's not appropriate. And you're asking for a lawsuit. You're asking for one. So please be fair when you're looking at candidates. Skill set, that's it. That's all that matters. Okay. Last but not least, let's talk salaries. So this is the elephant in the room. Obviously, most of you guys are concerned with, well, how much does a recruiter make? How much money can I make? Is that something that's even worth my time? I'm using two websites to gain this data for this whole series. Um, and I'm doing it based on Atlanta's average. It's very hard to do a national average. Atlanta's average. And we're talking about Atlanta, okay? Not Macon, not Savannah not Georgia, Atlanta. Based on the two sites that I use, Payscale and Salary.com, a recruiter in Atlanta averages between fifty-seven dollars and $59,000. Now, that's not with any type of bonuses. Um, that's not with any other type of structure. That's solely based on their pure salary, fifty-six to fifty-nine. That's the average. Now, for some jobs, you will be compensated based upon who you hire and how many people you hire. Um, that direct position that I referenced earlier, if you hire this engineer for this direct hire company, they may give you a $5,000 bonus. They might, they might not. If you work for an actual organization, the odds of that actually happening is slim to none. Now, with working for an organization, sometimes organizations will offer different incentives. Hey, recruiting department, if you hire at least this number of people and our retention rate stays below this and our turnover rate stays below that, you're eligible for a 15% increase based on your annual salary. 
Or they may say, hey, Shan, if you hire 10 people this month, you'll get a $500 bonus. The comp structure is different, but pure salary, just pure salary, 56 to 59K is the average. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This has been so much information. It's actually been a pleasure to kind of do some research and share all of these details with you. As I mentioned, please just leave your comments or questions down below in the comment section. I'll try my best to get to all of them. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and make sure you stay tuned for this series. It's going to be super exciting and have lots of information. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.